This episode is sponsored by me. I've written a book about world building titled Paracosmicon. There will be more about that at the end of this episode. This YouTube series will be dedicated to showing the results of my world building and thoughts as I do so. People ask me all the time what my method is and how I'm able to organize so much data. The simple answer to that question is I use Obsidian Markdown to organize my thoughts as a second brain. Not sponsored by them, they just have very good free to use software. We may touch a little bit on my breadth first world building technique as the series progresses. That method works best for me because I did not start my most recent world building project with a focus on building a story arc, which is one of the strengths of breadth first world building instead of depth first world building. That world is called Kijemen, and you will certainly learn much about it assuming you continue to watch this series. This introduction episode is about some problems with my past world building project of Eurozudo and what I have changed between that project and Kijemen. For me, the scale of the project itself is important for the world to feel imposing and intimidating to delve into. I want to give my audience a reason to explore the world's contents. It helps that I have limited the scope of the world to a finite area within an infinite plane. Some settings can get trapped in the scale of things, high concept science fiction being a casualty of this problematic mindset. A creator can easily find themselves among a tsunami of alien worlds, intelligent species, and planets, all of them with the need to feel unique and different. My first world building project fell into this category. Some have experienced that feeling firsthand. I have to rewrite it almost entirely to get that universe back on track. All of this expansion of explorable locations leads to a Planet of Hats scenario where there is a desert species, an arctic species, a jungle species, etc. When in our reality, almost every Earth-like planet would have a frozen polar region, a desert band around its equator, and lush jungles around those deserts due to lighter nutrients being carried away by the wind, fertilizing surrounding soil. Every planet is going to have occupants of it dealing with every kind of condition imaginable. It is up to the world builder or storyteller to make each place feel lived in and unique. When discussing my technique, I am going to focus on talking about my world of Kijemen. I have other world building projects, but Kijemen's world is the one I've put the most of my recent time into. Most world builders have their Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Discworld. The universe of Kijemen and the world of Una, the Infinite Archipelago, is mine. I will also be referencing another world of mine in the context of a post-mortem. Una is a world that is an infinite plane of sky islands. These skylands float above a torrent of clouds levitated by magical energy radiated from gemstones called Gemin. These gemstones serve many purposes, with elemental abilities indicated by their color. In addition to releasing directed elemental energy, they can be used to summon elemental golems called Kijemen, which is the namesake of the universe. My first major world building project was the story foundation for a tabletop role playing game I made throughout my teens. It was a science fantasy universe called Yurizuto. It has problems caused by inexperience, a lack of research into science fiction concepts, power scaling issues, and story structure. It contains a pantheon of high-powered protectors of a star system with two inhabited worlds who are effectively deities and a technological theocracy led by an artificial intelligence that can restore a person's memories and create a perfect clone of their body constructed from digital storage. This ruins any hope of character death and removes all permanent stakes. The Kijemen universe was started as a personal project with no financial incentive or plan to make it into anything more than just a hobby. 
This made starting and working on the project feel more natural and enjoyable. Starting with no end goal in mind made designing the world difficult due to the paradox of choice. The problem of having too many options results in dissatisfaction with the choice and makes decisions take much longer. The good thing about world building is that unlike purchasing something, if you are dissatisfied with the decision that you make, you can just change it. It only costs you time. When starting the project, I did not want it to end up with as large of a scope as my sci fantasy world ended up having. With more than 30 worlds, each with its own species and cultural relationships, including hive minds, non biological crystal based life forms, bestial races, strange alien biologies, space elves, and anything else I could think of at the time, like sapient cats with wings, not anthropomorphic cat people, they were literal house cats with pegasus-like wings that spoke fantasy English, wore armor and wielded weapons. This was obvious feature creep. So I had promised myself to stick to one planet for my new world, and develop the culture specifically to be a living, breathing society. Yurizudo's story was made of sporadic short stories and entries over four 1,000 year blocks, split into 22 periods of time I called sagas. The intention was to skip all over the place, similar to the Elder Scrolls series, focusing on specific periods of time. That was more daunting of a task than I was prepared to undertake, where I bit off a little more than I could chew. Many of the sagas remained untouched, and I'm not sure if I'll ever go back to that process. The world of Una, despite its infinite plane of skylands, is still treated as a finite space, with only an Earth-sized region explored by its secondary inhabitant species, the Dreamers. These are the human allegory of the universe. They are identical to humans in biology. Only the name the species calls themselves has changed. Human and Dreamer are used interchangeably. The world of Una is split into regions, each controlled by one of 20 factions. There have not always been 20, and throughout the history of this world, empires have risen and fallen. This world's story is in static time, following a period of only one or two generations, when not much on the grand scale of their history changes. Just a short period of war and some near-apocalyptic events. Unlike Yurizudo's dynamic time, where stories take place all over that previously mentioned 4,000 year range. By using an Earth-sized landmass, it becomes easier to restrict myself to developing individual national cultures. This is not much different than building 20 planets in practice, but I don't have to worry about splitting planets into regions, countries, or local governments. The factions of Una don't require building evolutionary biological history, like the planets of Yurizudo did. I can world build each nation, one at a time, and focus into deeper areas of detail when needed. So this has been a short introduction to my world and a bit about its scope and how I fixed some of my past mistakes. The next short episode in this series will be about the world's natural laws and cosmology. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next episode.